Welcome back to the channel. For today's video is going to be the design of a base plate. In order to discuss to you clearly on how to design a base plate, let me give you this example. Let us consider a steel column W8 by 35, which is supported by a concrete pedestal having a dimension of 400 mm by 400 mm and a compressive strength of 28 newton per square millimeter. The steel column is subjected to an axial compression load of 1,800 kN and the dimensions are the following. Design the base plate that could carry the load, given that the yield strength of the base plate is 248 N per square millimeter. Based on the NSCP section 510.8, the design bearing strength for the limit state of concrete crushing are given by the following equations. Nominal bearing strength, P sub P, is equal to 0.85 times the concrete strength, times area 1. And this is to be used if the area of the concrete pedestal is equal to the area of the base plate. The next equation is the nominal bearing strength, P sub P, equals to 0.85 times the concrete strength, times area 1 times square root of area 2 over area 1. And this is to be used if the area of the concrete pedestal is greater than the area of the base plate. But this should be less than or equal to 1.70 times the concrete strength times area 1. Where the area 1 is the area of the steel base plate and area 2 is the maximum area of the supporting concrete. Going back to the sample, the first step is to assume for the dimensions of our base plate. As required by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the base plate dimensions should be large enough for the installation of four anchor rods. Length n should be greater than the depth of the steel column, plus 2 times 3 inches or 76.2 millimeters. This will give us 358.4 millimeters. And the same manner with the width B, it should be greater than the width of the steel column, plus 2 times 3 inches or 76.2 millimeters. This will give us 356.4 millimeters. In this case, we will choose 360 millimeters by 360 millimeters as our trial base plate size. After that, we will check for the bearing strength of the concrete, then compare it to the actual axial compression load. Our area 1 is equal to 360 mm times 360 mm, this is equal to 129,600 square millimeters. The area 2 is equal to 400 mm times 400 mm, this is equal to 160,000 square millimeters. We will be using the second equation since the area of the concrete pedestal is greater than the area of the base plate. And we have, reduction factor, phi, multiplied by the nominal bearing strength, P sub P, is equal to, the reduction factor, phi, 0.65, times 0.85 of the compressive strength of the concrete, 28 newton per square millimeter times, the area of the base plate, 129,600 square millimeters, times the square root of the area of the concrete pedestal, 160,000 square millimeters, divided by the area of the base plate, 129,600 square millimeters. And this will give us a value of 2,227.68 kN. But this should be less than or equal to 1.7 times the compressive strength of the concrete, 28 newton per square millimeter, times, the area of the base plate, 360 millimeters by 360 millimeters. And this is equal to 6,168.96 kN. Since 2,227.68 kN is greater than the actual compression load of 1,800 kN. Therefore, it is safe to use the 360 mm by 360 mm base plate. 
Now since we have already calculated our base plate dimensions. We will now move on to the calculation of the required thickness of the base plate. For wide flange sections, the equivalent compressive area is the product of 95% of the depth of the wide flange, multiplied by 80% of the width. Now solving for the variables M and N, which are the bearing interface cantilevers. We have, M is equal to N minus 0.95 of the depth, divided by 2, this is equal to 82.15 millimeters. N would be equal to B, minus 0.8 of width, divided by 2, and this is equal to 98.4 millimeters. In addition, we will also calculate the auxiliary variable, gamma, multiplied by the yield line theory cantilever distance, n prime, which is equal to the auxiliary variable, gamma, times, the square root of the product of the depth and width, divided by 4, where, the auxiliary variable, gamma, is equal to 2 times the square root of x, divided by 1 plus square root of 1 minus x, where x is equal to 4 times the depth times the width times the actual axial compression load. Divided by the square of the depth and width, times, the reduction factor, phi, times the nominal bearing strength, p sub p. Substituting all the values, we have x is equal to 0.81. And this should be less than or equal to 1. Then, the auxiliary variable, gamma, would be equal to 1.25, and this should also be less than or equal to 1. Now, the value of auxiliary variable, gamma, multiplied by the yield line theory cantilever distance, n prime is equal to 1 times the square root of the product of the 206 and 204, divided by 4. This is going to be equal to 51.25 mm. Therefore, the required thickness is equal to the largest of m, n and gamma n prime, which is 98.4, multiplied by the square root of 2 times the actual axial compression load, 1800 kN, divided by the 0 0.90 times the steel yield strength, 248 N per square millimeter times the area of the base plate, 360 mm by 360 mm. This will give us a value of 35 mm. We will compare this to the minimum thickness, which is one-fourth of the largest of M and N, that is 98.4, we have 24.6 mm. And thus the required thickness would be 35 mm. And that's it for this video. Please help this channel by liking this video and to be updated for our future uploads, please subscribe and hit the notification bell button.